In order to understand the functions of the hand or the functioning of the hand, it is very important to have and some information regarding the uh, muscles and their action which are actually present or acting at the level of the wrist and the hand. And that is what we are going to talk about in this part of the lecture in which we are going to take a look at the muscular muscular uh, structures which are present in the hand or they're acting on the hand and we actually take a brief overview of them. So basically we have intrinsic muscles and extrinsic muscles and we're going to talk about both extrinsic and uh, uh, sensors and flexes as well as the intrinsic muscles of the wrist and hand. So let's start off with the extrinsic muscles. So extrinsic muscles we have muscles at the anterior aspect as well as the posterior aspect. When we talk about the anterior aspect those are the extrinsic flexors and we talk about the posterior aspect we have the or the dorsal aspect we have the extrinsic extensors now one uh, very important thing about this they have pretty much the same site of origin uh, for uh, these muscles both in terms of uh, flexes and extensors so flexes actually they are arising from the we can say flexes and extensors they are arising from the medial and the lateral epicondyles as we, are, as we are going to take a look at the upcoming section so in the anterior aspect or in the flexes we have the flexor carpi and laris flexor carpi radialis and palmaris longus uh, in posterior aspect we have again three muscles but we have two type of radialis muscles we have the extensor carpi radialis longus and we have the extensor carpi radialis brevis but in the anterior aspect we had only flexor carpi radialis there was no radia uh, brevis or longus and the other hand we also have the extensor carpi and naris in the posterior aspect or the dorsal aspect similar to the ventral or the anterior aspect which had flexor carpi ulnaris so talking about the flexors we have uh, the flexor carpi ulnaris flexor carpi radialis and palmaris longus but they all have pretty much the same site of origin which is actually the uh, medial uh, epicondyle of the uh, medial epicondyle uh, of the you can say the distal aspect of the humerus so it so there may be a little bit of difference uh, there may be a attachment slightly above or below it but roughly we usually say that it is it has the same attachment site and when there's inflammation and this attachment site or the common attachment or the common proximal attachment or tendon of the common extrinsic flexors then we usually term this condition as the medial epicondylitis or the golfer's elbow so here we have the flexor carpi and laris muscle, which is this one. As we can see, the origin is from the medial epicondyle of the humerus and insertion is at the pisiform bone and the base of the fifth metacarpal. And as uh, already evident, because they are on the ventral aspect and they are flexors, so the action is wrist flexion. But another important thing is that it is actually present on the medial side. So when it contracts, it also can result in the ulnar deviation. And it is supplied by the ulnar nerve. On the other hand, we have the flexor carpi radialis muscle. It also arises from the medial epicondyle of the humerus, but it crosses towards the opposite side and then inserts at the lateral aspect of the body or the lateral aspect of the hand at the base of the second and third metacarpals. And its function is again wrist flexion, but with radial deviation because it crosses towards the opposite side. And the nerve supply is actually the median nerve. The third flexor is actually the palmaris longus muscle. As you can see here, once again, the attachment or origin is from the medial epicondyle of the humerus but the attachment is on the palmar fascia at as at the center so it does not involve in the radial or ulnar deviation but it does assist in wrist flexion in terms of the action of the flexor carpi ulnaris or flexor carpi radialis and once again just like the flexor carpi radialis the nerve supplies by the median nerve now moving on to the uh, Extrinsic extensors, we have the extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis. The extensor carpi radialis brevis because its uh, uh, length is slightly shorter and the extensor carpi radialis longus because its length is slightly longer than the brevis muscle. So the attachment is pretty much the same at the lateral epicondyle of the humerus but if we specifically want to address uh, the extensor carpi radialis longus then the attachment site is at the supracondylar ridge of the humerus and the attachment is at the base of the second metacarpal which is here and it is involved in wrist extension and radial deviation as the name suggests extensor carpi radialis radialis so it is uh, on the radial side so it is involved in the radial deviation as well and it is applied by the radial nerve and c6 and c7 root Talking about the extensor carpi radialis brevis, as we can see, once again, the attachment site of, of, of the origin or the proximal attachment site is at the level of the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. And whenever there's uh, all of these muscles uh, extensors have the common 
uh, proximal attachment site and when it gets inflamed the tendon gets inflamed it is known as uh, tennis elbow or lateral epicondylitis and the attachment however is at the base of the third metacarpal which is the middle finger and which is in the center so that's why even though it is has the name radialis in it it is not involved in radial deviation and it works as a wrist extensor only but once again the nerve supply is by the radial nerve the third muscle is the extensor carpal naris and as the name suggests it is on the ulnar side so it does uh, arise from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus but it moves or shifts towards the medial side and inserts at the base of the fifth metacarpal and for that reason it is not only involved in wrist extension but also acts as a ulnar deviator or is involved in the ulnar deviation but however the nerve supply for all the three extensors is the same which is the radial nerve and the nerve root is c6 c7 and c8 now talking about the intrinsic muscles, we have once again, uh, there are two major muscles on the proximal aspect and two major muscles on the distal aspect. So on the anterior or the ventral aspect, we have the flexor deuterum superficialis and on the uh, and the flexor deuterum profundus. As the name suggests, it is actually involved in the flexion of the digits or the fingers. The, on the posterior aspect, we have the extensor digitorum and the extension digi minimi and extensor indices. So extension digitorum is involved in the extension of the digits and the extensor digit minimi is involved in the extension of the uh, fifth digit or the extension dice is involved in the extension of the first digit and that's pretty much all about the uh, overview of the uh, little bit of brief overview of the muscles that are actually involved in the functioning of the hand and based on this information we can now better understand the true essence of the topic which is the function of the hand in the upcoming uh, lectures so I hope you learned something new out of it and keep on watching skyte.com for more lectures like this thank you very much